Hey everyone, this is Nick, and while I do love a nice graphical user interface, sometimes you just can't resist the pull and the power of the command line. Whether you're a regular desktop user, a developer, a sysadmin, or anything else, there are tons of command line tools that can make your life easier and simpler. So, in this video, we're gonna take a look at 9 amazing command line utilities that can really make you gain time or waste some just for fun. What will not waste your time though, is this segue to today's sponsor. Thanks to Linode for sponsoring this video. Linode is my favorite solution to run a Linux or gaming server. It's what I use to run my own Nextcloud instance and my own only office server. The interface is super easy to use. They are affordable, they have tons of documentation online, and they have one-click deployable servers for a ton of applications or games, like Pi-hole. Pi-hole is a DNS sinkhole that filters out requests to ad serving domains. Basically, it lets you block ads and improve network performance. It lets you actively monitor every DNS request made on your network and block requests as they come in. And you can deploy it in one click on Linode so you can ensure I stay poor. And to get you started, Linode is giving you $100 of free credit to get your own Linux server or gaming server running. To get access to that, just click the link in the description below. Let's begin with file management. And while you can definitely delete files and folders using the rm or rmdir commands, you can't really put them in the trash if you want to keep them for later. Fortunately, there are two tools you can install to make that work. The first is trash CLI for trash command line interface. And the second is rm trash. Let's start with trash CLI. It's a tool that lets you put files in the trash, respecting the free desktop conventions, so they will appear in your graphical trash can as well. It also lets you list files that are in the trash, restore them, or empty the trash can entirely. The syntax is really easy, with trash-put to put a file in the trash, trash-list to list all files, trash-restore to restore a file, and trash-empty, well, you guess what this one does. Simple, but easy if you want to delete files, but you'd prefer to keep them in the trash just in case. And if you would prefer a tool that does the same thing, but uses a syntax that's exactly the same as the rm command, you can add rm trash on top of trash CLI. It does the same thing, but you can use the options you're used to, like dash r to put directories in the trash recursively, as in this folder and everything it contains, including subfolders and their contents. Or you can use dash F to force the removal. RM trash can even be aliased to replace RM. You can create an alias in your .bashrc config file, so when you type RM, you're actually putting files in the bin instead of completely deleting them. All the commands, the syntax, the options, the arguments, the aliases, everything is in the GitHub pages for the projects, and they're going to be linked in the description of the video. That's going to be the case for literally everything I mention, so don't rush onto your keyboards to comment where are the links or how do I install, because it's all down there. And now, brace for the where are the links comments, which, you know, do post them if I forgot to put the links in the description, but yeah, they're going to be there. Next is auto jump. This is a tool that lets you super quickly jump into a specific directory based on the folders you visit the most. Autojump starts maintaining a database of the folders you visit based on your history. The more you visit a folder, the higher its weight in the database. To use it, just type J followed by a few characters that appear in the directory's name. For example, if you often visit your own local copy of your dev project called Awesome Super Amazing Website, located in slash home slash nick slash project slash websites slash awesome super amazing website. You can just type j awesome or j web or j aw and autojump will automatically cd you into that directory. Huge time saver compared to hitting the up key 200 times until you find the previous time you cd'd into that directory in your bash history or pressing tab 20 times to autocomplete the path as you type it. And if you have multiple directories that have the same name but a different path, Autojump will put you in the one that you visited the most, but you can add characters to your command to go to another one. 
For example, if I also have a second project called Awesome Super Amazing Website, but this time it's located in slash home slash nick slash project slash other slash awesome super amazing website. I can type J O R and Autojump will know that the O character refers to the slash other directory and jump me into that instead. Same goes for subfolders with the JC command for jump to child. It's just a fantastic time saver that will work better and better the more you use it. If the ls command is not enough for your file management needs, you can also use ranger. It's a command line file manager that uses the vim keyboard shortcuts to navigate and interact with files. Which means that no one will ever be able to exit this file manager. No, just kidding, you can just hit Q to quit this one. It works with a three column view, letting you see multiple parents directories and the files and folders they contain. They're all color coded, blue for folders, green for executable files, purple for audio and more. You can navigate using the arrow keys and you can press R to run a file, Y to yank it or copy it, P to paste, D to delete or cut, and U to undo. It's a simple tool, but it's much, much more practical than typing ls, than finding the right directory, seeding into that, hitting ls again and again and again and again. And if you combine it with autojump, you have an amazingly fast way to zip around your whole file system. Okay, the next project's name will probably get me demonetized, so I will replace it by the frack in pure Battlestar Galactica fashion. Frack me. But don't worry, the real name is written here in big characters. Every time I say frack, just assume I said what's written here instead. Seriously, YouTube, forcing me to make nerdy references instead of being able to just talk. Thanks. So, the frack is a project that will autocorrect your mistakes when you type a command. Let's say you're trying to install a package on Fedora. You type dnf install gimp. Your terminal will say, hey dude, you don't have admin privileges to do that. Well, instead of hitting up, then the home key to get to the beginning of the line, then typing sudo and the space, then enter, you can just type frack in your terminal. It will look at the error you got and automatically correct it to run the command. So you can just translate your real life reaction into an actual command that actually fixes the problem. Super handy and real life accurate. It will work with a lot of different errors, like mistyping an argument or a command, forgetting an argument, forgetting sudo, and a lot more stupid mistakes. It will of course ask for confirmation and offer various choices if there are multiple options to autocorrect. But you can disable that confirmation check if you're not afraid. I just love that command, thanks to ML, one of my patrons, for recommending it. And obviously, if you type a command that is going to wreck your system, but the command is correctly written, it won't stop you. So don't exclusively rely on it to fix your mistakes. Another super helpful command is TLDR. If you're starting with the command line or trying to learn a new command, you might find the dash dash help option insufficient and the man command way too overstuffed with text. Well, now you can be lazy by having access to a manual that's clear, simple, easy to read, well-written, well-detailed, concise, and cuts to the chase, completely unlike this sentence. Just type TLDR, then the command you want to learn about, and you'll get a nice, simple help page with the list of options, what they do, and an example, complete with colors to be legible. All these help pages are community-maintained, and the project already has a ton about the most common commands you could type. And if you're wondering, TLDR is for too long, didn't read. A perfectly acceptable answer to anyone on the internet that feels the need to argue by writing a full-on blog post instead of a simple comment. Or you could use TLDW for a video for too long, didn't watch. But don't do it on my video, I still have some cool commands to show you. No, 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 don't, 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 don't close the browser. Whew, thank you. Now, if you often develop web apps or just websites, you might be annoyed at how not all browsers support all features. There is an easy way to check which browser supports what with the can I use command. You probably already know about the can I use website, but you can also check it through your terminal by just typing can I use followed by the property or the feature you want to use. For example, can I use WebSockets will tell you which browsers support that and who's a bad citizen. 
You can also filter by mobile or desktop, include percentages for each browser to also see their respective market share, or you can include future browser versions. Or, if you prefer, you can open the results in the Can I Use website in your default web browser with the dash w argument. Very handy tool if you do not want to leave your blessed terminal just to check the contents of a web page. Or you could use the links browser from your terminal to check the exact same web page. Okay, onto something nerdier. If you want to have some kind of dashboard that looks cool, but is also practical and very customizable. It's edex UI. This thing might look like it's a hacker wannabe desktop replacement, but it's actually super useful. It basically displays a ton of system information, multiple terminals, your file system, your network usage, and an on-screen keyboard for touch users and more. It will take over your whole screen, but you can close it by typing exit in the terminal. You can configure a lot of things, including various themes, the keyboard layout to display, whether it plays audio or not, launching it in a window, disabling the mouse cursor if you use a touchscreen, and a lot more. The project isn't maintained anymore, but it's still perfectly usable. It's definitely useful if you live in a terminal, but would like to have some kind of small widgets here and there to let you know some stuff about your desktop, or have a graphical file manager on top of an almost full screen terminal. You probably shouldn't use it in sensitive places like an airport or an airplane because it kind of looks like you're trying to hack something. Do you wish your computer could talk to you sometimes? In that case, use eSpeak-ng. My life is pen. He always tucks my CPU and GPU to the max to make stupid videos and bad jokes. Please help. <laughs> Sorry, you were not supposed to hear that. And yes, my computer is French also. eSpeak-ng lets you, well, type any sentence you like and have your computer read it in a completely robotic way. It supports multiple voices, which you can list with the dash dash voices option, and you can invoke those voices by adding the argument dash v followed by the voice name. Again, it might sound nerdy and useless, but it also means you can pipe the results of a command through eSpeak to let your terminal read aloud the results. So you can add eSpeak ng to your own programs or bash scripts, so you can ensure that people with impaired vision can still use them and understand what they're doing. Or it's also super useful in the workplace if you want to let your colleagues know that it's coffee time or, or time to grab a pint. Ah, GIFs or GIFs, however you want to pronounce them. I'll say GIF because that's how I've always said it, but feel free to point how wrong I am in the comments. If you produce a lot of these little animated images, or if you want to make some but you don't really know how, well, there's a nice command line tool for that called GIFGen. See how much more easier it is to say than GIFGen? Yeah, sorry. This little tool will let you turn any video file into an animated image, and it lets you specify the frame rate with the dash F option, and even select which portion of the video you want to keep with the dash B option to set the beginning time, and the dash D option to set the duration. So if I want to grab this little sequence, it starts at 6 minutes 56 seconds and finishes at 6 minutes 58 seconds. I can just run gifgen-b 416 because 6 minutes and 56 seconds is 416 seconds and then dash d2 for 2 seconds duration. And then the path to my video file and I'm done. And you can also use fractions of seconds to refine the output. And now you can use this awesome GIF anywhere you want because it's linked down there in the description. And there are a ton more tools, like NeoFetch to display your system's info and distro logo, Tmux to open multiple terminals in a single window, very useful if you're in a TTY, Wicket to parse Wikipedia entries, or Rig to generate fake identities to use in your tests. The command line is just extremely powerful and has tons of options that are either really productive or really fun to use. As I said, all the links for the ones I mentioned are in the description of the video. And if you enjoyed the video, if you want to see more awesome tools, well, don't hesitate to recommend them to me in the comments because I would love to make a sequel. And I'd also love to make this segue to today's sponsor, Tuxedo. Tuxedo is a company based in Germany. They make devices that run Linux out of the box, like laptops and desktops. You can either pick from a few well-known, very popular distros, 
Or you can just buy the device with anything and slot in whatever other distro you want because you know that they're gonna be compatible with Linux, either 100% out of the box or through Tuxedo's repositories that let you install all the little tweaks you might need to get everything fully perfect. They have a huge range of devices from the smallest ultrabooks to the biggest gaming desktops or gaming laptops and you can configure basically everything about them. CPU, GPU, storage, RAM, and even get your own logo engraved on the back. Personally, I bought this one, which is the Tuxedo Stellaris 15. It's a very high-end laptop with RTX GPUs, 12th gen Intel CPUs, lots and lots of expandability in terms of RAM and storage, a 1440p screen, the best keyboard I ever used, and a ton more awesome features. I edit all my videos on it now. I don't even use my desktop to edit videos anymore. It's so good. So if you need a new device and you want to make sure that this new device runs Linux perfectly, then head over to the link in the description, click it and grab yourself a new Tuxedo computer. They're really cool. Now, thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't like it, well, dislike it and tell me why in the comments as well. And if you really enjoy the channel and what I'm doing here, well, you can support me. You can just click on the super thanks button below the video. You can click on the PayPal link in the description or you can join my Patreon subscribers or YouTube members. Both get access to a weekly podcast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thanks everyone for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.